Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. We got another double down for you today. We're taking a closer look at the uh, Mekong battleship, uh, the Vietnam War River Monitor, and then we also have the new design uh, for the uh, Vietnam War era M113. We're gonna start with the battleship though, because this is a pretty unique model. So when you think about it, you know, we've done some, some various brown water Navy stuff in the past, but they've all been significantly smaller than this um, and have been restocked here and there throughout the year. This was kind of a, a, a one-time look at something that was a little bit of a different angle, different scale um, but something that we wanted to kind of fill out that uh, that, that full selection um, for the brown water navy and I think that this was something that a lot of people didn't necessarily expect to see coming and then when they saw it I know when I saw it it was like holy smokes the scale of this thing compared <laughs> to the rest of them it's just not really comparable right right so this is uh, the R Mekong River monitor this mm -hmm. is one of four of four different assault boats designed there's a whole riverine assault division right and they it was you know brown water navy they what they were gonna, going to do is take a, use the river riverways of Vietnam to combat the flow of supplies to the Viet Cong. So mm -hmm. the Viet the Viet North Vietnamese were supplying their allies, the Viet Cong, uh, guerrillas, pretty much through the waterways of, of South Vietnam. So anything south of Saigon is a huge, basically the the Mekong River estuary. The delta, right? The yeah. delta, yeah, and mm -hmm. and in order to get at those supplies and get at those bases that were being set up by the Viet Cong, they decided we're gonna make a whole riverine flotilla. Um, four specialized ships, there was a command ship, the uh, assault ship, it was basically a landing craft for, for ground troops, the monitors, and then there was a, uh, a fueler. Okay. So, so you, you did have, you had, you had your three basic types, and then they specialized. They had a couple of different years of production. Um, this one being the first year, this is the first monitor. The monitors are like the gunfire support ships. So mm -hmm. the ground troops will, will go in and assault off the landing craft. They're, they're World War II type landing craft. Right. Uh, LCMs, landing craft mechanicals, that were basically turned into assault boats. Uh, and the monitors being the battleships. Mm -hmm. They were the, the, ground, the gunfire support. So just bristling with guns of various types for various purposes. And really no kind of combat like we'd ever seen before necessarily. No, it's, I mean, I guess the, the closest thing that you could, you would, you would see to this in history was maybe the uh, Mississippi uh, River campaign of the Civil sure. War. Yeah, um, which funnily enough, those battleships kind of looked similar to right, what right. we're looking at they here. Were, they were monitors, they were gunboats, mm -hmm. basically uh, mortars and, you know, you know, armored boats on mm -hmm. the Mississippi River uh, with mortars and cannons and all sorts of things, you know, essentially to seize uh, Confederate territory mm -hmm. um, along the Mississippi River, uh, i.e. Vicksburg, that, the Battle of Vicksburg, all that. So this hadn't been done since the Civil War. Yeah, this literally sort of, this the sort, 1800s. This sort of like, yeah, this sort of like river battles that the United States was involved with. So they created all these boats out at, at, uh, at Mare Island, actually, mm -hmm. is where they, they had the riverine assault uh, force was doing all their experimentation, all their training, uh, and this came out of that. This is a a highly modified LCM. So they took highly a, being the key word there. Yeah, <laughs> they they took an existing LCM, which is a it's basically a landing landing craft for a single tank. Mm -hmm. um, they chopped the bow off, put this sort of like flat spoon bill on it, and the LCMs were naturally flat bottom boats because mm -hmm. they had to go to the beach. So they had these flat bottom boats. They cut down the gunnels so it's really low in the water. And then everything above the water was super armored. Mm -hmm. So you have this sort of, uh, this, this, it looks like uh, they took a bunch of oven racks and stuck them yeah, on the outside. Yeah, almost like rebar, but not yeah. rebar. Well, it mm -hmm. actually is rebar. Okay. They, they, they made a rebar frame mm -hmm. around the entire ship, or boat in this case. Um, they made a, a rebar frame and they put big blocks of foam in there. Foam, that's what it is. Yeah, right. So the rebar holds these big blocks of foam, which this thing, when it's all full of armor, it actually sits really low in the water and the foam actually gives helps it some extra, yeah. extra buoyancy. But it also helps um, with the armor system. So, like, let's say you have an RPG. RPG will pre-detonate on the, on the, the rebar, yeah, or the and rebar. then the, and the foam will absorb a lot of that blast and it will actually protect the hull inside from uh, you know, the hot jet of blast from that directed uh, mm -hmm. energy from a, a shape charge of the cone, the cone inside, the nose cone inside the, uh, the RPG. So it was specific, you know, specifically designed to combat what would be the biggest threat to this, this you know, life and limb on, on one of these things is, is that, that enemy RPG. Of course, it was armored against, uh, you know, gunfire as well. Well, and then obviously you're not working with very much clearance when you're sailing in the rivers. So the the, the less depth, basically, of your of yeah. your of your ship or boat, like Dan said in this case, uh, the better because the more maneuverable you're going to be in those shallows. Right. 
This, this is our display model. We pulled this out of GHQ, so we, we were playing with it, getting it all back into, <laughs> in, in this ship shape. So I did, I did notice we were missing our, uh, our, our string that mm -hmm. goes on the back here. So they must have never got it, this being one of the prototype models. Um, but they would actually drag chains through the water um, to uh, pre-detonate any mines that were in the water or cut cables because the, when these things came up the river or down the river and assaulted the, the Viet Cong bases, um, the Viet Cong quickly realized the only way that they were going to sink one of these things was to, to lay mines or lay charges in the water. Get wait to it before they wait, got wait, there wait, wait for one of these things to, to, to sail over or cruise over and then detonate the mine. They only, they only actually sunk a couple of these and they were in wow. really shallow water so they sank and they like were literally sticking out of the water. <laughs> so they didn't sink far and, and it wasn't like a huge loss of life when it, when, when it went down. So pretty effective basically from a, for taking something from World War II and just kind of, like you said, modifying it for a very unique circumstance for the Vietnam War. It worked pretty well. Yeah, it, it worked excellent. And they, you know, there's there's a there's spaced armor also around the uh, the, the 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 superstructure here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, in the spaces between, there wasn't they didn't have foam in the top because that wouldn't help with buoyancy at sure. all. Uh, they just left it empty. Um, but the crew would stack ration crates and anything else they thought might actually protect mm -hmm. the crew a little bit more. And in some cases, it's reported that the stuff they, they packed in there actually did more damage than good. <laughs> so oh boy. They, they were urged to stop putting rations and other things in between the bar armor and the, 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 the I guess, the armor plate that makes up the That's surface of, the, of the, the, the superstructure. So in this case, the superstructure has a, this, this up here, I have, the, I have the windows closed on it. It is a, it's, it's basically the wheelhouse up here. Mm -hmm. So you have one or two guys up here. Um, sometimes they would have a couple of M60 machine guns sticking out. Oh, of dang. Okay. So like, yeah, the, the guys, and you know, the guys that are like steering this thing, they want to defend themselves too. So they have M60 machine guns. But your, your main armament up here are these uh, M240Bs. They're, uh, uh, you know, in an armored, basically a, a small turret. Literally, yeah, and right. imagine being, it, it has a plastic top. It's like a, it's like a plastic top and you're sitting out in the sun oh. in the jungle and these things like are <laughs> cooking. The guys inside are cooking. Yeah. It's like you can see game. why some of our, our, our crewmen are, yeah. uh, are wearing less clothing than normal. Right, right. We do have, how, about, how many is it? 10? 11. 11. 11. 11 crewmen. 11 crew, just like the real thing. I have a couple inside. I, I put them in various stations. Mm -hmm. um, up here you've got a, I think this is a 20 millimeter cannon. Mm -hmm. So you have on, on the, each side of wow. the of the of the the you know the the, well, the wheelhouse, you have a 50. You have this 20 millimeter cannon. In the front, you have the real big gun. That's mm -hmm. a 40 millimeter. That's a Bofors. Basically. Yeah, right. Uh, it's in a turret that also has a coaxial. I, I believe it's another 50 inside the inside the <laughs> turret. Where can we put the guns? Right. Anywhere and everywhere, as long as you've got someone to shoot them. <laughs> in, in the command version of this, it's very similar. There's there's actually like a box right here. It's an armored. Mm -hmm. it, I don't even know if it's armored. It's almost like. I think it's armored just to repel like grenades from Tin landing. Shack, yeah, okay. yeah, so you have a box, a metal box here, and it would have radio antennas all over it. In, st in this version on the battleship, they actually have a, um, a, a mortar. Yeah, it's an 81 mm -hmm. millimeter mortar, and you may have recognized it from the Swift boats. Yeah, it's right. Same, it's the same mortar, it just lacks the 50, the, the coaxial 50 on it. <laughs> and the reason they, they don't put that on there is there's actually they got a, enough. a pintle on each side here. So you'll either see M60s or um, the M2s, the 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 Mod Deuce. Depending on what's available. Yeah, so suppose. 50 caliber. Well, it's a, yeah, and they were they they would upgrade, field upgrade. They might be issued one thing, but these guys were were, were whatever they could rapping. get their hands yeah. on. And then over time, they learned from experience what works, what did not work. They actually found that the Bofors was actually caught potentially caused more damage to their own troops. Um, so they, they the start, blast radius. Well, it has a, it has an explosive shell, but this the range on this thing. This is an anti aircraft gun. Mm -hmm. The range is several miles. So sure. if they overshoot their own, yeah, they could overshoot the enemy, yep. and, our, and our own guys are like on a patrol several miles away. You could be you could be inadvertently shooting your own guys. So they actually it got to a point where they had to get clearance in order to use that that, mm -hmm. that front weapon. Don't just, just be, let it rip. Interesting. Yeah, because it could potentially cause so so much damage. Um, on the real thing, they can lower all these masts, and I, and I have it on here. This is the little radar oh, thing, cool. so you can actually lower this because you know. Think, imagine you're on a river, and, mm -hmm. and if it's flooding or something, and your water level's high, you may have real low bridges to go under. Yeah, or, or trees so, or whatever yeah. else. So they would lower these. Just they, they do that on all the boats. They would do that on like the, the PBRs and the swim mm -hmm. boats as well. That all the masts were lowerable. Still a cool play function to right. see in there. That's that's a very interesting. There's not much in the way of printed elements. I didn't want to go too crazy on this because we're it's already a bigger than normal mm -hmm. uh, 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 craft, I guess. So you do have the star on the, the turret. You have your your numbers. M stands for monitor. There's a, there's an assault boat um, as well. It has A. The command I believe is a C. Okay. Um, and you know etc. Um, what would be re three. really nice is to actually make the assault boat with a ramp 
uh, someday because they they'd actually called them they they called these the Mekong battleship. They called those the, the Mekong aircraft carriers sure. because there's a landing pad on the roof <laughs> over where the crew, where the the assault troops would assemble. Mm -hmm. And what could you land on there? Light helicopters? Yeah. Oh pretty, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, so imagine. You know, the purpose of this thing is you know get your guys in and out. Mm -hmm. This this is actually fire support, but your your main assault boats, uh, the riverine assault boats, they, they can evacuate wounded, um, bring them out from the shore, and then you know you can't land a helicopter in a rice paddy. It's right. Just, it's just it's or swampy. a dense jungle. It, right. Yeah. So they would they would come out. They they bring out the the injured, and then they could land a hel as soon as you just got into open water, they could land a helicopter. Could literally right medevac right from the ship. Yep. Okay. Yep. That makes a ton of sense then. Yeah. So they they they, they did that. It was first. It was just field expedient. They just they 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 got a bunch of steel plate, and welded it over the top of these. And they're like, hey, that's a great idea. So they actually changed all of them to be able so, to do that. To, to have helicopter. This this is never intended to hit the shore. Mm -hmm. This this was intended to do. Uh, you know, either sweep the area first for for mines um, before the assault, or and then you know, I guess once you did that, you just basically orbit Monitor the or, area, <laughs> orbit, orbit around and, and and provide gunfire support as needed. Mm -hmm. Very so very cool. Eleven crewmen, they're all unique. There's not a, there's not a duplicate in the whole. Yeah, match. there is a ton of awesome artwork. This so I'll flip a couple of these guys around so you can see some of the the extras going on. And remember, Dan does still have some of them stored. Yeah, yeah. There's there's like I put a guy in this turret. I was going, hey, I'll show you the inside of the turret. But you know, it's actually love... easier said than done. <laughs> Once once they're inside, it's actually quite difficult to take them out. <laughs> well, they're built in there. They're, I put, one, I put one in and said, "Well, once they're in there, they're probably going to stay in there." <laughs> you got two two more guys in the in the in the uh, the well here for the the mortar. And just like we talked about, you know, in, in the the swift boat of the of the past, everything on this just screams like playset. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. You can open all these turrets. Um, you can even flip down the doors on the side of the pilot house. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with it. And then because it's just kind of sturdy and flat, you don't have to worry about like, yeah, right. You don't have to like it move a, it around or it is, tip it. It is it like or, a surfboard. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty solid is the way this Yeah, ab goes. absolutely. So I love those those playset builds like this because it actually gives you a chance to really utilize, you know, this giant crew of minifigs, which, you know, if you're going to have our is definitely really cool. And then, like I said, if you've collected the PBR, the Swift Boat, etc., having all three of them together, that's practically the Brickmania Brownwater Navy collection right there. So yep. that's that's a pretty cool thing, a, a neat collection to have, especially for something that's touched on kind of so few and far between um, compared to some of our other more bread and butter uh, uh, topics or yep. whatnot. But definitely very, very cool. The, the next logical in the, the next logical boat that we would do would be mm -hmm. the assault boat with the with the ramp on it. Mm -hmm. It would be it would be fun to do. So maybe once this sells out, that'll that'll be the next one. So we are we have we just made one batch, one mm -hmm. batch of fifty. Um, I think we're down. We sold more than half. So the numbers are getting down there. If you're thinking about getting one of these, get it now because it's not going to be sticking around forever. Yeah, definitely not something that you'll you'll see regularly returning. One, and because it's a huge build. Two, because it's a very niche topic for for a lot of people. So definitely something that. Uh, if it's if it's your wheelhouse, please don't don't come don't come after the fact two days after it's sold out, being like, when will that restock? Because <laughs> we're just going to have to break your heart and be like, it won't. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. that's part of the deal. However, though, for for those of you who are looking for something that restocks a little bit more regularly, let's jump on over to the M113 here because this was a uh, a build that I think a lot of people were really excited to see in big chungus form uh, when we got kind of the new the new updated design ready to roll. Right. Um, a lot of the questions that you got right away were. Oh my gosh, are you going to go back and revisit the Vietnam series of it? And of course, the answer was yes. Yep. And here we are, the initial kickoff of that uh, of that relaunch, so to speak. Right. So people are asking, why didn't you do the ACAV right away? Well, as we were talking about, we only have limited capacity for minifigs and printing and all that stuff and, and everything, production. Uh, and in order for me to fit this into the time slot that I had, you know, I, oh, I had available, mm -hmm. I, I was limited into what I could do. So we did the basic one just to get an M M113 going just because people were asking for it. Um, and this, this is exactly what you would see coming off the factory. This, this is there's no add-ons. This is this is it. You got the the one M24 or M <laughs> M2HB. Mm -hmm. I keep calling it M240. M2HB, uh, the Browning 50 caliber in the commander's position. Uh, we do have this awesome commander, which I which, love the helmet. Which that we, custom we, element's so awesome. We finally made the Cold War tanker, or you know whatever it's called, mm -hmm. the, the vehicle, the helmet, vehicle, though. yeah, very iconic, so, kind of that oversized look to it. Well, it's got to fit those giant headphones. Exactly, <laughs> like if you know you've seen it, that's uh, that is right. unmistakable. And I like some of the artwork upgrades as well, having that cable on the back. Oh, the seats down. This <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and then there's kind of a kind of an interior on this thing too. Sure, which sure. Is cool well, to see. I mean, you you have to have an interior. This is an armor personnel carrier. Mm -hmm. Let's let's just before I rip the top off, let's go through the exterior yeah. details. The original the original M113 before they really started up arming it up armoring it, 
um, was meant to be amphibious, mm -hmm. um, which means it could it could ford small rivers and, and you know swamps and stuff no problem. And you have what is called a swim vein. Mm -hmm. um, it's not actually for swimming, but what it does is if this thing goes in the water, this thing comes out. It's a piece of plywood, and they can prop stops it up. Stops it from, yeah. Yeah, it, it stops it from, like, basically submarining under the water when you're moving for, you, that forward momentum, and this wedge shape is going to drive you underwater. That, mm -hmm. that counteracts that. So it, it's plywood. It's not like... <laughs> not a big steel sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, right. it's a piece of plywood. It, it, they can deploy it uh, when they're going into water. Um, you do have, of course, the, the tip of... The old, double door. The, the ramp in the back. Should, you know, this thing actually rolls pretty good on our... Considering it's rolling on that, that's impressive. It's like impressive. nylon polyester material. Yeah, <laughs> considering it's rolling on the tablecloth, that's yeah. impressive. So you do have the ramp, uh, and it does have the, the, <laughs> the characteristic door inside of door, mm -hmm. door inside of ramp. Here, op closed, open, so guys can get in and out without having to lower that ramp. Um, and we do have this cool little, Slam made this cool little uh, tow cable. It's an awesome print. piece of artwork, it really is. That. On the back, but that tow cable, yeah, it's it's such a you know such a simple one tile, yep. one piece of art. Like, why didn't we do that a long time? ago? It adds a lot, no yeah. doubt, no doubt. Um, there is some printing out. Of course, you have the star tiles, which star tiles are nothing new. This is a stock tile. You can you can <laughs> order it off out, out of our Brickmania store mm -hmm. website. Uh, we did a couple of a couple little numbers on there. This is the serial numbers. Well, and that's the, that was one of the big upgrades to this design, right? Is just oh, how slope. unbelievably clean that <laughs> edge is. It's just absolutely. Well, awesome. as soon as Lego came out with these corner tiles, I you was knew. like, I'm like, I'm gonna update the M130. It just took a long time to like actually, you know, like a lot of times I feel like we're playing the lottery here. We spin the 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 the, 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 the what is it? A drum full of numbers and. <laughs> Somebody pulled the M113 yep. number finally, like, all right, all right, I'm doing it. I've been, I've been waiting and itching. Ever since that piece came out, I was like, mm -hmm. I, I know exactly where that's going. <laughs> uh, you know, so I, I, I took the opportunity to do it. So anyway, the uh, promising you that I'm going to show you the inside. I'll just show you how easy it is to take this, this top off here. So you have the roof. This is one chunk of the roof. Uh, I believe it goes this way. Your chunk, chunk of your roof, your commander actually has a seat that is, can be adjusted up and down. Actually, it's in the bottom position now, so if you wanted your commander to ride down inside of it, that's where you'd have it. Um, you also can put your driver inside, so that's there. And I should show off this little box that people are, probably have no idea why there's this little box in here. So a long time ago, I, made, I showed a picture of my, my driver in the position so that his head was slightly sticking out of the turret. And people, how come you, you know, how did you do that? Did you take your minifigure and cut him in half? Yeah. Right. They're like, no, I just stuck a one by one brick in there. That's exactly what's going on here. I just stuck the one by one brick in there. You can put this back on and just his head's gonna be sticking out. That's perfect. So I actually included it in instruction, instructions this time. So if you were wondering, why is there this one by one brick unexplained in the middle of the world? It's, that's, I'm explaining it right now. So you can have your driver sticking his head, poking his head barely out. Mm -hmm. So close the commander's thing, have this thing all sealed up, except the poor driver's gotta stick his head out. Um, you, do, you can open the hatch on the roof, has, has the roof hatch, and of course everything comes off. If you wanted to take the entire top of your, your, your vehicle off. Yeah, that's nice that, and clean. Get inside, um, play with it. Load it with grunts. Yeah, <laughs> and you can, you can load this thing up. Um, I don't know how many. I haven't tried to figure, you know, tried, tried to, to assess how many you can guys. fit in there. Sure. I'm sure you, if you're stacking them like cordwood, you could probably fit a, fit a yeah. lot in there. Maybe, maybe some of you guys who have actually uh, been, been a crew on these things can tell me how many people you fit inside. Yeah, or how many you have to. <laughs> right. And I think it has to do with how much equipment you're carrying with mm -hmm. you on your back and, and whatnot. So um, nice, simple build, sturdy. We will keep this one around for a little bit. Um, it's not like a limited, this is, I guess we call it an evergreen kit. Mm -hmm. Some of the more specialized kits, it's going to be like, like the, the battleship here, once and Two done. very different ends of the spectrum. Right. So this, everything on here is common. We'll be able to keep it in stock for a long time. Cool. Well, and obviously a neat design that I think a lot of people were excited to see just uh, how the, the series would re-kick off. So it'll be exciting to see the other variants that come down the line. Yeah, there's more. There's, there's more. Model. I'm actually, this week I'm starting another one. It's cool. not going to be a Vietnam, it's not a modern, modern M113. Mm -hmm. That's, I'm excited to to like, you know, knock out a bunch more of these that, that I've been wanting to do for a while. Sweet. Well, there you have it. The new M113 and then obviously uh, the uh, Vietnam War River Monitor, the Mekong Battleship, uh, two awesome kits being showcased here on a Designer Studio Double Down. Anything else you want to cover? No, this is exciting. It's, I'm glad we get, we're bringing back some of this Vietnam stuff. It's, it's, it's going to be a year-round theme, so don't expect like in the old days we had a Vietnam month. It'll be something that just, you know, Cold War stuff will just be released periodically um, throughout the year. There you have it. As always, thank you very much for watching and uh, tune in next time as we review something else. <laughs>